comparison of the similar quantities and the division is called ratio for example if you take any two quantities like five books and uh, ten books there are similar quantities here book is the similar quantity so five books and ten books if we take these two quantities and compare them on the division right? if we take the five books and ten books and uh, five and ten five ten we have taken and uh, just divide these two quantities 5 by 10 and it's exactly equals to 1 by 2 or, or 5 by 10 in this place form we have written and uh, we call this is as ratio we have taken two quantities books or if you want to take any other thing like two pens and five pens when we compare these two on the division, we call them this ratio. We call it as a ratio, and uh, ratio it will be represented as with the symbol, the two dots vertically, and this dot in this form. So it's called as five is two ten. This also can be written as five by ten. So five by ten usually on the division we have written. So the ratio. This is a 5 is to 10. This is is to is to. We need to call as is to 5 is to 10. So obviously we need to remember whatever the quantities we are taking. That two quantities are similar. If you take the five books and uh, uh, two pens, it is not uh, comparable uh, until and unless we take any uh, five books and ten uh, five books and two pens. Uh, 10 books and 2 pads or something which are in the same places uh, and we have taken before so the quantities should be taken in the same form like books or pads or people or boys and girls or something we, uh, we have taken children and elders like in the similar way we have taken then it will be meaningful if you take something like books and uh, roads are constructed so it is meaningless we cannot uh, uh, compare this all the things which are uh, different in quantity and different which are not similar so this is a concept about ratio we have discussed so all we need to take the similar quantities and divide them and we write it in the form of 5 is to 10 like 5 or uh, is to this is a symbol for ratio so this is a concept let us go for the terms in the concept terms of the ratio here we have observed there are two terms that is 5 by 10 is written as 5 is to 10 there are two terms representing the ratio obviously we we'll take, uh, take in some cases we will be having so third term also in high classes we are going to learn and work it so here we have the two terms the first part is called as antecedent first part is called as antecedent and the second part here is called consequent antecedent and consequent and there are two parts first one is antecedent left hand side uh, whenever, uh, this, whenever we are looking at the ratio and the order must be uh, uh, important the most important is order here and whatever the first is here like uh, we observe the ratio and the, the left hand side part is called antecedent and right hand side part is called as consequent and these are the parts these are the terms the ratio and let's start discussing about the properties of ratio we have some properties like the antecedent and consequent is multiplied by the same number let us take, let us take if it is multiplied with the same number, 5 is to 10. Then it is multiplied by 2. So into 2 and into 2. So it becomes here a 10 into 20. So 10 is to 20. So, so when we multiply this 
anticipate the consequent the ratio on both the sides with the constant number with the anticipate and with the consequent also we multiply with the same number into 2 into 2 so we are getting 10 is to 20 so this is similar to the 5 is to 10 for example we take this 5 is to 10 and this uh, 10 is to 20 we compare this whole like uh, we get here 1 is to 2 because we cancel 5 table this and uh, in this also we cancel 10 table we get 1 is to 2 these are similar so what we understood we have taken a ratio and uh, anticipated consequent is multiplied this constant number and the ratio will be seen it will not be changed so let's, let's take this some other example 5 is to 10 5 is to 10 let's divide some number with a constant number divide on both the sides like anticipated and consequent. Now previously we have multiplied with the constant number on both the sides. It will be seen. So the ratios, the ratio, the value of ratio is not changed. It is both are equal. So, so 5 is to 10. So let's divide antecedent and consequent with this part, whatever the ratio we have the parts. Let us divide with the constant number. Let's take the 5 and divide with 5. On both the sides like antecedent consequent so divided by 5 and divided by 5 so we get here the result is 1 is to 2 so because 5 by 5 is 1 and 10 by 5 is 2 so we got 1 is to 2 here so what we understood this is 5 is to 10 already we have discussed the both before and then this is 1 is to 2 and again we tried this ratio by 5 by 5 and we are getting the 1 is to 2 again so what we understood from here is we take a ratio and divide with a constant number uh, uh, to the uh, ratio like pass for each part and the value of ratio is not changing the same thing but it is different of uh, addition and subtraction if we add some numbers on both the sides if a constant number is added uh, for antecedent consequent, it will not be seen. The ratio will be changed. So it's uh, it's equal for it is equal when we multiply uh, uh, same number on both the sides of uh, the ratio, like antecedent consequent, and it is also same. But uh, addition we cannot do for antecedent and consequent. If you add a constant number, the value of ratio will be changed. This is not a matter for subtraction also. It will be changed. So it is uh, equal for only multiplication and division. Let's discuss about equivalent fraction, equivalent ratio. Like uh, just uh, just before we have discussed, just we can observe from that. This, this is five to ten, and we multiply by five into two and ten into two. So after multiplying the constant number, we got ten is to twenty. So this uh, we understood. This both are equal, but we simplify both. One is to two. This is one is to two. This both are equal, and this kind of ratios are called equivalent ratios. The ratios which are equal, uh, including the order of the parts, are equal. This is a, this is five and ten and ten to five. Uh, how this is equal? We can observe that is five is to ten can be written as one is to two, and this can be written as one is to two. So one is to two is similar, the same to the one is to two. The both are equal. So uh, we can say that these are equivalent. And they are equal to quantity, two quantities. Two ratios are equal. We say that the two ratios are uh, equivalent. Equivalent ratios. This is one is two and this is one is two. These are equivalent ratios. Let's uh, go to the next concept that is simplest form of the uh, ratio. Simplest form. Simplest form of ratio. Just uh, just before we have discussed, we have taken five is to ten. Let's cancel with. 5 table, we get 1 is to 2. 10 is to 20, cancel with 10 table, we get 1 is to 2. This is the simplest form, whatever the number will be cancelled on both the sides. Like uh, for example, we take 24 is to 36. So what we understood here is uh, 24 and 36. Uh, we get a 4 table on both the sides, like left hand side and right hand side. So 4, 6 are 24 and 4, 9 are 36. Uh, so what we take, let's divide with uh, 4 on both the sides of antecedent and consequent of this ratio. Like 
Let's divide, divide by 4 and divide by 4. What we get result is uh, 6. We get 6 here and it's to 9. But let's we can cancel the game still because uh, there is a uh, uh, 12 table. We did not cancel, but we have taken this 4 table. So, so it is cancelled still. So 6 is to 9. We get 3 table on both the sides. So let's take this is 3 table, 3 into 2 is 6. So let's divide with 3 on both the sides. So divide by 3 and divide by 3. The gap is your 2. This is 2, is 2, 3. So 6 by 3 is 2 and 9 by 3 is 3. So 2 is to 3. Now we cannot cancel because these are prime numbers 2 into 2 and 3. Uh, we don't get any common factor for both. So we have taken the ratio, we simplify with the all the terms or all the terms on this so antecedent consequent so tell the, the two numbers the two values are having uh, are not having the common factors like two is to three so this is a simplification how we simplify the uh, ratio the simplest form of the ratio so until now we have discussed about the ratio and the terms and its properties and the simplest form and equivalent ratio let's go to the Next concept that is the simplest, sim, sorry, simple interest. So earlier we have discussed about the simple, simple interest in previous classes. Like if we take any loan from the bank. So for example, we have taken ten thousand rupees from the bank, and uh, uh, for one year, and after one year we are going to pay that ten thousand. Pay some extra amount to the bank because we have taken a loan, so that's the reason to pay on next to pay to need to pay on that particular amount. We need to give some extra amount to the additional to addition to that 10,000 rupees. So, whatever the amount we are paying additionally, along with the amount what we have taken, that is called as interest. We need to pay. So, what we are going to pay to that and the additional amount. So, for example. We have taken 10,000 rupees, so we we'll pay after one year. So, in particularly, one, one constant, uh, uh, constantly one, one uh, percentage of amount we need to pay for monthly for this kind of amount. So, for 100 rupees, we need to pay one rupee. Like in that form, the percentage we need to calculate and pay for whole 10,000 rupees. And uh, we get here the time period also. If the time period is increased, then again, uh, an additional amount we need to pay for a year, for whole year, it will be added. So, uh, this kind of things, what, what is the additional amount we are paying? So, that is called interest. So, in order to say some other example, like uh, if we deposit some money in the bank, like a fixed deposit. So we get some additional amount uh, after some long uh, after some time, like uh, for after one year, we get some additional amount what we have deposited along with that. So that is called interest uh, paid by the bank because we have deposited our money. So they are paying some extra amount to us. So that is called additional amount. That additional amount is called as interest. So the amount and the additional amount paid by the bank or somebody to us so that is called interest and uh, amount and interest so the total so the principal what we have taken and the interest so together we call amount the principal and uh, interest together is called as amount so the extra money what we have getting or we are, what we are paying to somebody when we have taken a loan in that cases that amount additional amount is called as interest so Let's discuss about the interest. So, simple interest. So, it has some formula. It has some rule to get only the interest. What we need to pay or what, what we will get. That is, the interest is equal to the amount of the amount is equal to principal that means how much money we have taken principal what amount we have taken principal into rate of interest like for each amount we need 
some certain amount additional to that. How much amount we need to pay is that is a particular order for one person or two person or three person. The percentage out of hundred we need to give. For each hundred we need to give. If we are taking the so 100 rupees, like for each 100 we need to pay 1 rupee for if it is 1 percent interest like uh, if we, we have taken 10,000 rupees so how many hundreds are there we need to find out so 100 hundreds are there and this so for each 100 we need to pay 1 rupee so how many hundreds are there there are 100 hundreds so 100 rupees we need to pay for 1 month that is called as a rate of interest 1 percent means 1 hundred so if it is 2% for each 100 we need to pay 2 rupees like that so this is calculated of, uh, as a rate of interest we call rate of interest and time and both divided by 100 so as the first case we are taking that is the reason we are dividing with 100 so, so principal is multiplied with rate of interest and uh, the, to the time so divide by 100 and then we'll be getting interest what is to be paid or uh, what we will get so for example let us take one of the example so let's take we have taken 10,000 rupees from the bank the principal we have taken we have taken from the bank so the rate of interest is to be paid is 10 percent 10 percent we need to pay that means we have discussed about the percentage that is for each hundred we need to pay 10 rupees additionally for one month so that is called rate of interest additionally we need to pay how many hundreds are there that many times we need to pay that is rate of interest we know our rate of percentage as a percentage we have learned in previous classes about the percentage so in that manner so rate of interest is 10 percent and time how much time we have taken for each month we have discussed now so month, 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 how many months but the year, the time will be calculated in the years for interest always be calculated in the year only so if it is given the months we will change that months into the years then we calculate that uh, value for times for example one year let's take one year so we have taken 10,000 rupees for the bank uh, at the rate of 10 percent interest and after one year how much amount we need to pay uh, the interest, what is the interest to be paid uh, and to, what is the total amount we need to pay let's find out so here the interest is equal to principal into rate of interest into time divided by 100 and you just here we have discussed so interest is equal to principal is 10,000 rupees into rate of interest is 10 into time is 1 year divided by 100 so let's check that here there are zeros, two zeros, let's cancel these two zeros and two zeros and we get here interest is equal to 100 and to 10 so interest is equal to 1000 rupees so only the interest to be paid is 1000 rupees and to pay 1000 rupees so total amount we need to pay is the total amount to be paid and what is equal to uh, principal plus interest this is P is P meant for principal and I is interest how much amount we need to pay additionally to that so principal is how much we have taken so or how much we have given if we give it to somebody for the interest so we have taken from the bank so principal is 10,000 rupees this is 10,000 plus interest is 1000 rupees so totally